In section 6.6, .6, we are going to be looking at reading energy diagrams. Now, energy diagrams is a topic from Gen Chem, so it's not entirely foreign. Although, in this section, we are going to be looking at energy diagrams from the perspective of an organic chemist. So it's going to be with a little bit more detail than what you were exposed to in general chemistry. But we're still looking at the same overall thing, which is... In this case, I'm showing an exothermic reaction as we move from reactants to products, the activation energy, the change in overall energy. These are the type of things that you uh, should remember from Gen Chem. So uh, on the topic of looking at energy diagrams from the perspective of an organic chemist, we're going to look at three different things. And the first one that we're going to talk about is something that we call kinetic control. versus thermodynamic control. So as it turns out, as you're about to find, uh, as you're about to learn, when you have a couple of reactants, for example, uh, this molecule which is called 1,3-butadiene in HBr. When you have these two reactants and bring them together, there's actually a couple of different things that they could do together. They're not always, 100% of the time, going to react to produce the exact same product every single time. So these two reactants, when combined together, they could give us this product. Or, if we combine these two reactants together under slightly different conditions, they could give us this product. Two different products. So um, because we're starting with the exact same reactant, if we put these two reactions, plotted them on the same energy diagram, one on top of the other, they're both going to start at the same energy because the reactants of the, or the energy of these reactants is identical to the energy of these reactants because they are identical molecules. But the energy associated with the process of forming this product is not going to be the same as the energy associated uh, with forming this product because they're two different molecules. So maybe it would look something like this. Two different energy diagrams for the two different processes, both starting at the same point because the energy of the reactants are exactly the same, ending at a different point because the energies of these things are, the products are different. Um, this graph that starts and stops at about the same time is a reaction, an example of a reaction that's under, excuse me, kinetic control. A reaction that is under kinetic control. is the one that goes on the fastest path. And the one with the fastest path is the one that has the lowest activation energy. It takes the le uh, takes a lesser amount of energy to hit the activation energy of this kinetic controlled reaction, which means that the, the reactants are going to get to this point faster. It's not going to require as much heat, for example, to get to this point. So it's going to happen faster. Kinetics, as you know, is all about rate and speed and things like that. So this reaction with the lower, with the lower activation energy is under kinetic control. The other pathway is said to be under thermal control. Or thermodynamic control. The reaction that's under thermal control is the one that makes the most stable products, which are the lowest energy products. So because thermodynamics is all about energy, 
the reaction pathway that's under thermal control is the one that maybe requires more activation energy to get started, but in the end, it's going to produce the most thermodynamically stable product. So at this point in time, what I need you to know are just simply these definitions, the difference uh, of the two pathways, and if I gave you an energy diagram looking like this, you would be able to pick out which one is under kinetic control and which one is under thermal, thermal control. As far as understanding the reactions and their mechanisms, that will come later on in the year. The second thing that we're going to talk about are transition states and intermediates. So some reactions, actually a lot of reactions, don't happen in just one simple step. They actually take uh, several steps on the way from reactant to product, like what's being shown here. So this is our reactant, and this is our product. And you can see that there's multiple activation energies along the way. These local minima right here are called intermediates. An intermediate is a somewhat stable, sort of stable, sometimes stable enough to be isolated compound that's formed in a multi-step reaction. It's not a reactant, it's not a product, it's something in the middle. Uh, one example of an intermediate would be this particular reaction, which also is not something that you need to memorize yet. It's a reaction that we'll be learning really soon. So this is a two-step reaction where in the first step, the bromide falls off and produces this intermediate. And then in the second step, an OH group comes in and attacks and produces our product. So this is our reactant. This is our product. This would be an intermediate. Somewhat stable, sometimes isolatable, formed in the middle between reactants and products. These local maxima on this energy diagram are called transition states, which are given that um, notation that looks a lot like a Fisher projection. A transition state is just a straight up unstable, not isolatable thing. It's not really I don't want to call it a compound. It's not really a molecule. It's a thing that is formed in the instant, in the very moment that bonds are being broken. Instant. I cannot spell tonight. It's formed in the instant that bonds are being broken and or formed. So the transition state, which we can't really draw easily, would be the point where this carbon bromine bond is right on the verge of breaking. Like the moment that that bond is being broken is the transition state. 
that's that would be one of them and then there'd be another transition state for this molecule at the moment that the new oxygen carbon bond was being formed so they're very unstable non-isolatable compounds actually this this reaction has three transition states